Okay, so uh, in a short recap, what are we talking about? Uh, the direct map, uh, I apologize for ARM and PowerPC folks, uh, they call it linear map. Uh, the direct map is the mapping of uh, the physical memory with uh, some probable, probably some offset when a uh, randomization is enabled. But for the simplicity, we can assume that uh, there is no uh, there is no offset uh, in this. So this example shows how two eight uh, gigabyte uh, physical memory banks are mapped into the kernel virtual address space on x86. So uh, the bank that starts at zero will have a virtual address of uh, four Fs, eight, and then zeros on four level system. Uh, there will be a, a hole between the banks uh, and the second bank that has physical address of uh, two eight zeros will have a virtual address of FF eight O two eight zeros. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the direct map is uh, one of the main vehicles to access uh, physical memory via a K malloc a page a struct page and so on. Uh, so practically anything that doesn't use vmalloc uh, accesses physical memory through uh, direct map addresses. Now, uh, there are cases uh, for x86 and PowerPC, a direct map is uh, created using large pages, as large pages as possible. So uh, if there is enough uh, memory, uh, x86 uses uh, one gig uh, pages to create the direct mapping of the physical memory. And uh, the areas that can't be mapped with the uh, gigabyte pages uh, are mapped with two mega or 4K pages. Uh, there are cases when uh, okay, do you still hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. I think Bustamel was trying to ask I a question. It's about loss of a connection, sorry. I, I, okay. uh, so uh, there are cases when uh, certain operations require splitting of the large pages in the physical memory, in the direct map, and this uh, causes uh, some performance degradation depending on the area, on the benchmark, and what is happening. Uh, so in a sense, if you'd like to have a... a I think it's an F slide. Uh, if we're allocating an object at this address and then we call something like set direct map invalid or set memory read only or set, set, uh, change any other page attributes, we would cause uh, the split of one gigabyte page that uh, maps uh, this region and uh, it will uh, it will be mapped as uh, two, me two mega pages at the beginning, two mega pages in the end, and then these two megabytes will be mapped with 4K pages to allow a change of uh, attributes in a single 4K page. The, the use cases, there are a couple of use cases that already exist in the kernel that cause uh, these uh, splits of the direct memory. Uh, these are uh, modulus, BPF, uh, F trace, K props, uh, uh, essentially anything that calls uh, set memory uh, APIs. There is also MemFD secret uh, that uh, splits large pages in the direct map. Uh, and the upcoming use cases, uh, such as uh, protecting page tables with PKS uh, and the uh, AMD secure nested pages that requires uh, to exclude pages from direct map when they become guest private and put them back when they become uh, shared between the host and the guest. Uh, I think TDX will also need something like that. I'm not sure. And uh, uh, regarding the performance, I last year I ran some benchmark uh, benchmarks on the, my laptop. Uh, so uh, this benchmark checked what happens if the direct map is entirely filled with 4K or 2 meg pages. Uh, the results, uh, uh, the, res the results uh, I'll show in the next slide are not so disastrous. Uh, 
and the, I remember the the Intel a uh, zero day lab also did a bunch of experiments and published their results here. Uh, so it's uh, not really awful, but it's still not nice to uh, to have 4K mappings. Uh, there, there was no clear winner for for one gig or two meg pages, but uh, it's definitely a 4K uh, underperforming all the cases, uh, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, another thing about bench, uh, the, the, uh, these uh, these represent uh, data access. Uh, when I tried to, uh, to check what happens with the fragmentation of high kernel mappings uh, that uh, map the kernel code, uh, the results are far more uh, severe, uh, and I easily got like twenty percent degradation for my MTR benchmark when the code was mapped with four K pages rather than uh, two meg and one gig pages. So the suggestions to reduce the heat uh, of the direct net fragmentation and to allow uh, uh, and to allow more API, more functionality that requires uh, 4K pages in uh, some places uh, were largely to reuse uh, the large pages that were already split and uh, then uh, uh, amortize uh, the effect of direct map splitting and uh, provide 4K pages from the large pages that already were allocated. Uh, like when there is a request for 4K that uh, will have different uh, attributes uh, in the page table uh, than its neighbors, we allocate, for example, two megabyte page and split this page to 4K chunks and hand down 4K chunks each time a new 4K page with a particular attributes is requested. And there were a couple of uh, variants of this mechanism posted on list. There was uh, something, uh, some sort of uh, allocation with the uh, which I implemented with Genalog for secret mem uh, at some point of its uh, the patches lifestyle. Uh, there was uh, what Rick implemented with the shrinker and he called it grouped page, cache, grouped page allocator uh, for the uh, page table pages. And there was uh, my last RFC about uh, making a cache with a shrinker kind of next level to the page allocator. Uh, uh, and uh, basically, uh, we've stopped the discussion at that point, uh, more or less, uh, uh, without actual agreement where the cache should be placed near the consumer or near the page allocator. And uh, this is both uh, mainly to discuss uh, the alternatives. So uh, I tried to summarize at least my view on uh, how is this works. Uh, uh, the caches uh, that are closer to user are probably simpler to implement. They have uh, better access control in the sense that the user knows knows how the pages are used, what uh, attributes they have. Uh, there is a possibility to compact those caches uh, to have the uh, ability to recreate large pages uh, when the cache be becomes fragmented. I believe these caches would have larger memory overhead on overall system because if there are several users users that use uh, such caches, uh, each cache will have its own uh, stale memory that uh, can be reclaimed at any time. Uh, there apparently will be higher fragmentation of the direct map. There will be more splits uh, than with a, a unified cache or something like that. And uh, if whenever a, the user frees a page, it should be freed exactly to the cache it was allocated from. And from my experiments I've done for the last year with the different address space isolation stuff, a freeing is the most difficult part. Because when you allocate the page, you know what context you are in. And so it's easier to put it in the right place, right page table, whatever. 
uh, when the page is freed, uh, especially if we are to, to reuse existing freeing mechanisms such as uh, TLB, MMU gather, and so on, uh, or page uh, page free in a via in a vm scan vm scan uh, the pages uh, the the only information we get about the context is what we may store in struct page and it's not very convenient uh, so in that sense if we move the key pages uh, as close to page allocator as possible uh, it probably will result in more intrusive changes and the cache will be a black box uh, to its users so uh, it it would be really hard to make allocations movable and uh, do something like compaction for example but i believe it would be more memory efficient overall with lower fragmentation of the direct map and uh, it's not my bullet core mm integration <laughs> bless the meal I thought it was your bullet. Oh, maybe, maybe it was. I, I anyway. added, uh, oh, hey. I so added, given uh, the integration with the page allocator of closeness to the page allocator, probably the free would be not as complex to implement. And I think it was the idea. Uh, uh, oops. So uh, that's uh, the intro. And now uh, I, I've seen there was a question in. Ah. I've seen there was something in chat, but it was not about this. Um, I was going to add, Mike, um, the other benefit of the page allocator uh, is that you can use the buddy parts to get higher order allocations, which um, would actually be useful for the, right. the PKS table stuff. Uh, right. Otherwise, you'd need to re-implement it in the cache that is uh, per yep. user, close to user. Yeah. Um, Why do you need higher order allocations for page tables? Page tables, for instance, uh, on x86 require two pages for PGD. Yeah, for, um, I think also for um, for PTI, there's a order one allocation. Uh, the PGD, in, uh, when PTI yeah. is on, the PGD yeah. allocation is ordered to the order one. Yeah. PT should be order zero, no? Uh, when uh, PGD just, is on, there are for, two chains yeah. in PGD. Uh, one is uh, user visible, and one is only kernel visible. And yeah. whenever that's there is PGD, a, yeah, but PTE. Uh, PTE is one is order zero. Yeah, but it, it's the one that gets. It's not the one that's uh, the hardware doesn't use an order one page, but just the kernel does or allocates an order one page. So it's just yeah. how the how the software is written. In general, PTI can be changed to use uh, per CPU offsets or something when it does a context switch. Yeah. But the bit flipping is neat trick. So my next thought was to try to actually make it a, a migration type in a sense, a great type in a sense get the nozzle and list to freely area and see what we can get from it. I never actually started to implement it because I really don't have enough background on how page allocator works and so on. It will take me a while to get there. But the idea was to do like something similar to my great CMA. Yeah, I noticed in your RFC that you mentioned it as a possibility and I was thinking a bit about it today and yeah I was going to say that maybe that should work <laughs> but you already <laughs> planned yeah. it as well <clears throat> because uh, one of the issues you had in the RFC was that you used some more bits from the from the page block map I forgot the exact name but now we use only four bits yeah i remember I, I should have used eight but yeah, i used yeah. five yes which doesn't work but 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 for migrate types i think there's like six of them at most today if you have cma uh, i afraid we still need to increase uh, the page block bits 
I, I think if you add one more migrate uh, type, it will still fit in the three bits we have for that. Uh, uh, And, and have a movable, movable, reclaimable PCP, which is four. ACMA is five, and isolate is six. Yeah, I think PCP types is alias. Yes, it, it's alias with high atomic. So one, two, three. We have four. I think we have six. We have four a unconditional and the two more conditional. Yeah. So that would be seven. That would that be seven. Still fit within the three by bits. Uh, and, yes. and if it would be a migrate type, then hopefully would also don't need special cases. Uh, in the body uh, operations, it will, it will need some special cases like say May, I believe, because you can't fall back from it to different. You can't fall back to it. Uh, yeah, fall, fallbacks have some tables that can be set up properly. Uh, but, the, but the question is if it has to detect, like merging mm -hmm. two blocks where one of them is of this type and I think it shouldn't. I think we shouldn't merge blocks with the, this type. So they, they, they apparently they would be excluded from compaction and they and so on. My then opinion they... is we, we will have some special cases like say May does in this but probably in other places. Um, we'll... And I'm not sure if we need any special page flag or just by know. seeing it's in the, it's in the proper migrate I'll, type. I don't think I'll need a page flag. I think we, 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 can, we take to Meg, let's, Let's consider x86 standard standard uh, sizes. Uh, we take two mags and we uh, we mark the entire page block as uh, migrate type, whatever it's called. Uh, and so uh, the allocation will be quite similar to what I did in the previous RFC. And the freeing will see that my grade type is such and such, and uh, it can put uh, the page back on the same, uh, on the appropriately list without having a page, uh, without having a page flag. Page flag would have been easy. If we had page flux, it would have been easy. Then you can check if the page needs some special handling virtually anywhere, right? Uh, by the way, uh, does any of the use case need to support the situation where we don't know upfront that this page might be eventually at some point needed to be set read I, only or unmapped. I think, yeah, I think, I think KCV, I think KCV and TDX. So, so we should support also like uh, uh, converting arbitrary page to one of the. Uh, to 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 this scheme, which oh. I think should work, right? Because we would just flag the change the migrate type of the page block, and, uh, and basically that would be it. Because then 
it would become part of this cache okay. and all the further so what, free what sub page would like I I've seen in the SCV patches they do sometimes they set a direct map on set direct map off uh, set direct map invalid valid whatever uh, so uh, you suggest that whenever page gets uh, uh, different attributes that its neighbors we mark the entire page block as a let's say not in direct map or somehow. And then uh, whenever pages are freed uh, in this page block, we will know to reuse them, you, to reuse them as a, a part of this new migrate tag. Yes. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but the question is, can we detect the cases where we no longer need this and convert the page block black back? Uh, probably can... mean like scanning the direct map and uh, if we it's... see that all the pts are mapped and read write then we can convert uh, it to huge page again and change the migrate type it's more like scanning uh, because we I have no we other tracking more... except the page tables we can scan from the free list side so whenever we have two mags free in the same well, if it's free, mm -hmm. that's the simple case, but... Uh, are you mean... My... Uh, what yeah, happens okay. if we have the, the same uh, two mags with the same uh, permissions uh, again, or... Example? Yeah, because uh, if, if we just temporarily change some page to read only and later back, while there are other... Pages oh, it will be like the page same two people. megabyte block, yeah. <laughs> but it would be worth quite... to support this detection that we can. I think Kirill it. has some patches about something like that, like two years ago or so. Doing a collapse of uh, mapping in the direct map. Okay. But he didn't uh, hook it into anything in particular, and then uh, he, I, I believe he stopped working on this. I, mean, I think the easiest place to check would be when you're setting a page read-write. Just check if the rest of the larger page is read-write and do it then. It's already right. a pretty heavyweight operation. So, I mean, like, check the, the other 511 pages. Or just the... Uh schedule this check and then yeah periodically that process would be good. the scheduled i mean you also probably want to go um batch the re you know the the reconversion to large pages as well it'd be nice if you could do one shoot down for several um you know two megabyte regions of broken down to 4k pages i think we can save some shoot downs on the some of the transitions mm -hmm. and it, it depends on the usage though so one of the thoughts why i suggested using 4k in, in the cache and then letting the actual user to decide on the final permissions it was partly because of it that uh, that when you allocate the two mac page and split it into 4k uh, at the page allocator or at the cache level you don't need to bother what actual permissions will be you only need to provide 4k pages for for the users and then uh, the whole tlb uh, tlb management will be delayed until the actual user would like to change the permissions to read only read right back on and so on it would be um nice if when you got those 4k pages they were unmapped already because then you don't yeah. need to do a, a shoot down to to set the permission they're just ready to have a permission applied to them so uh, I actually thought that I, I keep the 4K pages mapped and they, uh, they are still mapped in the cache. Uh, and then uh, the user will decide when to do the shutdowns. 
and Mark says you want to place pages in, you might want to place that in the pages before mapping. Uh, I think, Rick, actually you had some use case when you needed to invert uh, the mapping and mapping in the page tables because you had to have it mapped. Sorry? I, think, <laughs> I think there was a, a, a case in the PKS page tables when you needed to uh, somehow uh, do additional map or additional map to make uh, the, to update the page tables. Maybe I'm using KMAP local, therefore Where? not the direct map, but something temporary uh, elsewhere or not? Well, for PKS, if you need to write to these pages, uh, you just can toggle the key. It's pretty easy. Um, oh, yeah, that's so that's um, the keys. I'm not quite sure what. Uh, you just write in the star. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to update the PT. What do I mean? If it, if you if you're allocating a bunch of um if you have some usage that wants some kind of permission page and you're allocating a bunch of um uh you need to get a bunch of pages like page tables or something and then you have to shoot down every time i'm not sure that the i mean you're, you're right that you're clustering you're still getting the clustering in the direct map but you're not getting the shared um shoot down Like the, the the fact that you could batch you can you, you talked about amortizing the cost of the shoot down so you convert a bunch of pages in in bulk and then you get a bunch of pages from that one shoot down. If you just sure. leave them as read write. But then, in, for your use case, for instance, for PKS, if you have it unmapped from the first from the beginning, like whenever we allocate to make page, we unmap it. Uh, we flush the TLD, mm -hmm. and then uh, there, when there is a request for 4K page, it should be mapped back again with the new permissions, right? Um, uh, so you're saying that page allocator would would um, would would do so that it, application with permission, or the 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 caller of the page allocator would? the caller would might need to map it so for instance yeah. if it will be page table page you'd need to to map it to to create the page table entries and then mm -hmm. you set a new permission with the say pks right uh, so this map back and forth probably is an uh, you still need well uh, actually with with pks you don't need to flush tlb right um, when you apply a PKS key to some memory, that re does require a flush. But the thing is, it, it won't require a flush if the page was already unmapped, because then it can't be cached. So that's kind of the benefit of having in the page allocator a bunch of unmapped pages. And I, I almost wondered if like we could do something like we combine these two things, where the page allocator manages unmapped pages, uh, and then you know maybe it could even get handed back permission pages, and it knows it can it can re unmap them in bat in because you can. If you unmap a page, you've kind of done the, you sort of, um, you can do one flush for a bunch of pages that are going to end up being in different permissions that you don't even know yet, if you have them unmapped. And then when they get handed back, you just quick write the permission to the page table entry, and then it's ready to go. Does that make sense? And so you could even have the, the per user caches could handle applying the permissions if you don't want to have the page allocator know about every type of different permission that might come up. Um, Maybe. I need to think more about it. <laughs> okay. But but um, maybe. Now, uh, Vlastimil, did you look uh, into SCV actually what they need? Uh, because I only had some quick glance of the patches in there. Yes. Yeah, so. Um... So they, so for one of the cases uh, for the SEV SNP is that uh, some pages allocated that should be uh, private in the guest, which means there's this encryption going on and, uh, and the host is not supposed to access it. 
and uh, and for that there, there's a R map table that tracks the state of each page and so this page will be marked as like the guest private something and uh, then the problem is that if this page stays mapped as part of some two megabyte direct map mapping and the host accesses some different page within the same two megabytes then the then the snp machinery will check the rmp table for all 512 pages because it is about to create a two megabyte tlb entry so it has to check everything within these two megabytes and it will see oh but there's one four kilobyte page within this range that's gets private and we are not supposed to uh, touch it so we cannot install the tlb entry for it and therefore it all fails so it needs to split the map even without needing to change permissions so it simply need to be 4k page or or, 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 uh, or i think what they do no, is i they think unmap it it should be unmapped because it's simpler <laughs> and then we can detect that there's such page so, so two max should be split it and then uh, the page that became guest private should be unmapped entirely yeah rick, rick do you know if tdx is does something similar or uh, James, so maybe you it has some yeah it has something else um i can't give like an authoritative answer but i believe it was around um rights to the encrypted memory so um yeah i can't give an authoritative answer uh, last last time i saw that series was focusing mostly on the user space mapping and not the direct mapping but um i'd have to go back and look i guess uh, dave henson would know but i don't yeah. see him i don't see dave here james might know james James is too busy with something different, probably. You have to repeat the question. Hang on. What? Uh, does TDX need to unmap private pages from the direct map? If you know. TDX needs to unmap the guest VM pages from the direct. Uh, actually, I don't think it needs to unmap them from the direct map. It just needs to make them inaccessible to anybody else to prevent the machine being crashed. So unmapping them from the direct map would be the safest thing to do. Kirill's the guy who's been doing the patch set for this. Hey, but Kirill is not here, right? And Dave also is not here. Because last email was saying that SAV SMP needs to, uh, if there is a 4K out of the Meg become private to, to the VM, they must be unmapped from the direct map. Because the way yeah. how SMP machinery works. So I think that this would need something similar. Probably. I mean, it would certainly prevent ROP attacks from crashing the system uh, using the TDX page protection. So essentially, if this page is mapped in two meg in a TDX system, any access to those two meg may create a, a may create a machine check. May cause a machine check. So I think I'm remembering that when we were working on this, we thought um, that it could be, if we're going to go through the trouble of of having this um, the special uh, management of private pages, that it could be nice to have a um, a mode with, that just uses software to you know existing hardware features to unmap uh, I guess memory on the direct map, kind of like kind of like ex ex the exclusive page frame ownership concept um and i think that's where the direct map unmapping came from because i think at some point that series did have a direct map unmapping um piece but i'm just looking through the last um rfc and i don't see anything about the direct map and that's about the tdx or yeah uh, yeah 
So I think it's just focusing on unmapping from um, host user space. So like QMU's view of the of the of the. Um, Is it this set that used the memory failure uh, infrastructure for that, or it's another one? I, I'm quite behind the list. So. Okay. Oh yeah, Greg says that memory failure is also a use case because it wants to avoid speculation accessing yeah. the poison memory. Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, another thing on the having a, a cache of unmapped pages um, is that all the vmalloc, so there's also a, a, uh, applying kernel memory permissions to the vmalloc alias which, you know, there's not always a VML alias, but you can create one. And when that happens, you don't really care about the direct map anymore. So uh, like for modules, for example, it's going to go get random pages from the page allocator and then set memory at the same time, the permissions on the direct map and on the uh, VML alias, like for example, um, like setting it executable or something. Uh, in which case, if you have unmapped pages in the direct map, you can just leave that alone and just apply the permissions on the um, vmalloc alias. So in, in this case, you don't need to do uh, any, if you have unmapped pages already, you don't need to do any shoot downs. You can just apply the permissions and, you know, um, as long as you have it's some other way to load it. The initial shoot down. When you yeah, I mean, one, one, when yeah, you, it, when at you some point you need to batch unmap them, but then after that, you can just sort of apply, you can have like a, you know, for example, if you're going to load, you know, sometimes people load lots of JITs, PPF JITs or something. You can do that with, with zero, you know, average zero shoot downs. Of course, there's the batch shoot down at some point, but and it's kind of a BPF, nice benefit. PPF only uses say, the VMALIC area LS. Yeah, I mean, it's it's actually in a different address area, but it's basically a VMALIC mapping. Um, okay. And I think also, you know, for some of the PKS um, usages, like there was one, the one where they were, uh, it was uh, Elena um, Reshatova was doing one where she, um, you could, you would map uh, in VMALIC using PKS to protect a key. So all those kind of key storage um, usages also could benefit from like having a shoot downless uh, creation of PKS memory. You know, I remember you... there was some patches I, Ryan, and Elena did about uh, using a PKA, yeah. PKS to protect the key rings and so and so mm -hmm. on. Yeah, and I think there could be a lot. There could be more kernel secrets that could use the same thing. But the, you know, the uh, depending on how often the secrets are allocated, you might not want to do shoot downs all the time. Right. So uh, uh, I'll yeah, we'll yeah, I have just some implementation concerns. Uh, if if we go with the with the migrate type way, then uh, it would be very hard or intrusive if we wanted to guarantee that all pages that are on the free lists of that migrate type are in some predefined state like unmapped like you just proposed it, it would be that... fine if we if we could just assume that mostly they are in that state and if it happens some of them is not we will just do the unmap on allocation and pay this cost but if, but otherwise if we just check okay is this page really unmapped okay it is i don't have to unmap it again and do the tlb shell down then it should work rather fine and not be too intrusive on the page allocator if we want this this guarantee then we would be <laughs> we would have to be as intrusive as the page isolation i'm afraid which so I think we, I think I think it's more trade-off of how fragmented, how less fragmentation we want to allow versus how easy it is to manage the whole thing. Because so the, or, I didn't mean fragmentation, but batching of the uh, fragmentation of the direct memory. Uh, I mean uh, that 
okay let's say we have a lots of memory at the beginning and it's uh, until uh, the memory uh, usage builds so we can easily allocate uh, uh, high order to next pages and just split them and keep them in this list and this won't be a problem but at some point we won't be able to allocate to max and then we'll have to split uh, we'll have to split other at other places where there will be 4k pages of different that belong to yeah. different uh, domain protect protection domains let's say and so if we do not attempt to reduce fragmentation very much if we kind of let uh, let us uh, live with that uh, that more pages get fragmented as the system lives uh, it doesn't seem to be too complex to do all the whole tracking of uh, unmapped versus mapped like okay we we got we, we can't allocate to max so we are allocating 4k or maybe some uh, incremental high order but uh, we split it out uh, from the direct map uh, once, and then we continue to use it as unmapped. Yeah, but there, there will be other pages in the page block, uh, which we couldn't get because we don't have two megabyte page blocks available anymore, and we cannot unmap those. And at, at some yeah, point, those will be freed and merged with our pages, and then we would have no guarantee that that what's on the body allocator of this migrate we type is really unmapped or mapped. We can check the page table uh, yeah. and free a page from that page block. Yeah, that would have to be done. And it's not that uh, complex and it's not that slow. Yeah. yeah. We have so to make sure that we um, handle if we're going to also ever add in the repair. Again, repeat, Rick. Yeah, so you're you're saying um, if we want to check if a page is unmapped, we can just check the page table. Was that your was that your comment? Yeah, I just yeah. said that if we're going to ever remerge the pages, we have to make sure that those checks don't race with the remerging. Mm, I thought we would check in free one page, one of the free some pages. Yeah. We talked about having like a like, like a batch list that would accrue things that's supposed I, to remerge. I, I, and, I, yeah. I think it, these pages should not go to PCP lists anyway, right? And... No, we wouldn't probably make this a PCP list migrate type. Too. It's one minute. Uh, and then uh, when, when we call one of the free one page or free the page or one of those that uh, somewhere deep, uh, deep in chain, uh, we I think we can make the check race free. But but yeah, it does seem like it's not too many more accesses than just checking a page flag. So um kinda like the idea. Uh, so I think we have some ideas how to move forward. After the conference season is over, I will try to create the new RFC. <laughs> and now it's, time is up. So, yeah. thanks, Mike, everybody. Mike.